Welcome back to the rest of the story. What do you guys think of the logo? Brittany says she likes it, so I guess we're keeping it. <laughs> All right, we're on the accelerated video program tonight. This took approximately 45 minutes to an hour, uh, minus, well, I shut the camera off there for a little bit, I guess. But for the most part, I think you guys see what the problem is, uh, that pulley that I'm moving with my hand should not be moving like that. Uh, the bearings that hold it in disintegrated. And the problem that we had was, and it goes back to basically since I was a kid, is well, every farmer will say it too, that you can't really, you can definitely count on things to blow up uh, the night before you have plans. And that is exactly what this corn silo did. That's where we're standing here. Um, that blew up the day before that I was meant to go to Kentucky. So it's been busted for, well, at the timing of this video, it's been busted for about three days. Uh, our cattle are still getting fed, don't worry there. All we did is we pulled one of the gravity wagons out, filled it full of corn, or put some corn in it, and we're feeding our calves that way. So it takes a little bit more effort to get them fed, but you do what you gotta do. So what ended up happening is the inner bearings, let's see, Ryan's check and see if it's not any more oil in it, but it's pretty well drained out. And what happened is, is that these bearings have been on this, in this gearbox for basically ever. Um, in the history of my life, unless dad has taken it apart or harvester has come down and worked on it before today, this week, uh, th this has never been worked on before. This is the first time that this has been taken off. And it came apart, for the most part, pretty easy. You know, we had a few instances here, uh, well, like the pulley I'm trying to get off the end of that shaft. It was literally hanging on by the very end of the shaft, and I ended up not getting it off until we got it back up at the machine shed. But um, the problem with that was I was using a pipe wrench, putting it on the end of the shaft. I know, big no-no. Um, but originally, you can see the silo up above behind the motor is open. You see I'm resorting to violence. Don't worry, I get a hammer later on. I'm not using just a crescent wrench. Um, but the problem we had was the sweep auger inside the silo had gotten frozen. And what it really was was the corn on the bottom side of the auger, uh, it froze like rock hard. And Ryan and I, the day before, or the two days before, this actually completely quit. Uh, Ryan and I worked on it for a couple hours and we had it running thought problem was solved well my guess is well the bearings were already starting to fail after looking at them um, my guess is that Ryan and I working the motor and trying to get everything to turn eventually is what finished off what was left of the bearings and um, that outside bearing it started spewing gear oil and everything all over the place so it was pretty evident that we knew what we'd have to do, um, especially since, like, it really doesn't take much to move the end of that shaft, and the whole thing wobbles. So this is a learning experience for the most part. I mean, we got the heater up there basically trying to keep us warm because it was six below today. I mean, we're in out of the wind and everything, but, I mean, cold is cold. And fast forward a little bit, there's four bolts on the back of this gearbox that actually holds it onto that auger flighting, that auger housing. And it really came apart a lot easier than anyone, any of us really guessed, uh, to the point where we got a saying around here when things really start to break your way, where it doesn't really fight you. Um, and somebody starts saying like, for instance, Ryan did and I had to, you know, tell him to cool it. Oh, poison, uh, point in case. Uh, what Ryan was saying was once we got these four bolts out and we pull this uh, assembly, uh, the auger out of the silo so where we can uh, take the two bolts that are connecting the auger to the output shaft or input shaft out of the gearbox, uh, there's two bolts that are in it. And what I ended up doing is loosening them up 
and I had to tap him with a hammer. I'm pretty sure it's coming up yet. I think I caught it. So, and what happened was is that between the both of them, they were pretty well rusted solid. I mean, they look pretty nasty. And all it took was just a little bit of torque with a combination wrench, broke the, the nuts loose, and just tapped it with a hammer, and they both came out. Well, when I got done with the first one, Ryan's like, well, that was, that was a lot easier than expected. And I'm like, dude, shut up. He's like, what, what, what? I'm like, it will hear you. Now, not saying we're superstitious or nothing, um, but that is something that you will catch us doing if you are actually had a fly in the wall listening to us working on this different stuff. I mean, the semi also, I'm sure it's been said plenty of times. When you're working on stuff and it's really starting to go your way and it's not really fighting you that much, um, the last thing you should ever do, I mean, this is advice to anybody, any mechanic out there would probably agree with me, the last thing you do is start celebrating before the job is done. Do not, if you guys are looking for any advice from me when it comes to working on stuff like this, um, standard advice is do not start celebrating until the job is done. I can't tell you how many times through over the years where we've been working on stuff. I mean, when we were milking cows, I mean, we were always working on some form of equipment from the hay conveyors to the haying equipment, the silos, the uh, cement silo, um, unloader, uh, to the grain equipment, to the planters, to the tractors, to working with cattle. And that saying pretty much works for every aspect of life. Do not start celebrating until the job is done because I promise you, nine times out of ten, it'll fall apart practically in your hands just like how you're hoping it would until you get to the very last bolt, the very last uh pin roll pin or wire or whatever else and that will be the one that'll make your life completely miserable and that will be the one that'll end up costing you two three days worth of worth of suffering so um that is that's generally what we always do around here um i, I remember did i think i think it's coming up here but i did tell ryan that i'm like he's like oh at least that bolt came out he didn't see the second bolt behind it I'm like, dude, shut up. It's like, it will hear you. I mean, you, you think this stuff would. But um, overall, I think this is the first time any of this, like this auger and this back this gearbox, any of this has seen the light of day in, well, probably since it was put in. Uh, Grandpa got this silo. Ooh, what, it was the, I think this was the first... No, this wasn't the first saw you put in. The first harvester you put in was the the one behind me. And then Grandpa ended up getting a deal because the guy was really trying to sell him a, a high moisture silo, moisture corn silo. And Grandpa got a deal where he got the silo, the unloading auger, uh, but then the roller mill underneath. That was extra. And Grandpa actually got him to throw that in. Um... And also with the with the price of the silo, because remember, Grandpa said that uh, the guy was really trying hard to get a to get a silo sold. So I still do prefer the harvesters over um, the cement silos, the stave silos. I mean, you don't have to climb them just to get to to what is broken. At least everything is down in the bottom. Uh, the only problem is is like in the hay silo, or like even in this one, um, it can be a real nightmare if it quits working and you have to dig it out. Um, the hay silo in particular, that's happened oh, a handful of times over the years. I mean, that can get kind of expensive. And I don't even know how much this gearbox, what this is really going to take to fix. Um, I did talk, uh, talk to the local harvester dealer service center area. I don't know what you want to call them. Um, they changed names from the last time I actually talked to them. I mean, it's been a few years. And... Um, the uh, current options are either we go get the parts, we fix it ourselves, or we drop it off, they fix it for us, or we, which the guy was actually kind of recommending was, we take this up, we drop this off, get a core credit, and we just take a reman. And seems how this one has been here forever. I mean, the other bearings that haven't, haven't, uh, falling apart yet 
are probably fixing to. I mean, when you've gone to this much work to take it apart, we might as well replace all the bearings that are in it in the first place. And this wasn't the original plan of pulling this auger out to this point, but as you can tell, it was cold, and I really didn't have much uh, desire to mess around, so I ended up just pulling it completely out of the silo. And we were able to take it up to the machine shed and finish tearing it apart. I don't have any shots. This is all I have. I don't have any shots of the inside of the gearbox. It looks pretty nasty. I mean, we changed the oil just a couple years ago, but it's evidently something we should be check changing almost like every six months. So I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to show the camera up the silo here so you guys can kind of see in, which you really can't see much of anything. Ta-da! And stay tuned for any future videos on this project. I'm really not sure what I'll have, if I'll even film it going back together, but all I can say is, guys, I'm willing to try. So thanks for watching. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. Stay warm. We're under the threat of another severe snowstorm. So talk to you later. And now you know the rest of the story.